Hey guys, it's your boy Renzi Benzi and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to talk about or discuss on how to become an air traffic controller in the Philippines. But before we proceed in this video, don't forget to click the notification bell so that you'll be the first one to know that I have a new content or video here on YouTube. What exactly does an air traffic controller do? Let's watch some clips so that you'll have an idea of what we actually do for a living. Left, I want to keep you on the ILS. Okay. Four to five dentist survey recommend sugarless gum for their patients who chew gum. Sugarless gum, sugarless gum, sugarless gum, sugarless gum, 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 income to gum. Continental 962 heavy turn left heading 140. 140 Continental 962. American 7736 contact Newark Tower 118.3. Take care. Thanks. You do good work. American 7736. And they're gonna have to build planes faster to keep me interested, Leo. I'll be damned. Continental 428, descend and maintain 5,000. 6 to 5, Continental 428. Continental 961, go direct to Robbinsville at this time, please. Robbinsville, Continental 961. Shoot. He scores. It's sleek, it's crisp. Is that crisp vectoring or what? I got them lined up like rockets. Cactus 1549, if we can get it for you, do you want to try to land runway 13? We are unable. We may end up at the Hudson. I got an A320 diving for the river. Al, stack all the inbounds to LaGuardia. Let's put a hold on the tower, please. Come on, guys, standpoint. What about uh, over to our right? Anything in uh, New Jersey, maybe Teterboro? Teterboro Tower, I need a runway. Cactus 1549 needs to go to the airport right now. Newark Tower, what have you got? You have runway 29 clear and ready. Uh, you need emergency landing? Yes. OK, yeah, off your right side is Teterboro Airport. Sorry, say again, Cactus? Cactus 1549, radar contact lost. What you have seen earlier are just exaggerations of what we do for a living, but at least you know how crucial the nature of our job is. Basically, an air traffic controller is responsible to provide a safe, orderly, and expeditious flow of air traffic. Without air traffic controllers, it would be chaotic. Whenever a pilot fly on a designated airspace, they need guidance from us. We usually give them instructions and clearances of what altitude to maintain, climb or descend, or which direction they should take. So it's actually easy to understand, but it's more complicated than you think. You know what, it's actually kind of funny every time I get introduced to new acquaintances. Every time they ask what I do for a living and if I reply that I am an air traffic controller, I would always get that confused look. They usually ask if I'm the one who does like this at the airport ramp or I'm that person who usually enters the cockpit and gives all of those papers to the pilots. No, that's not a job of an air traffic controller. So in this video, I'm going to discuss on how to become an air traffic controller in the Philippines. Before you take the qualifying exam, you need to meet these requirements. One, you have to be a natural born citizen of the Philippines. So obviously, the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines does not accept a foreign applicant, so yeah, it's only exclusive for Philippine citizens. Number two, you need to be not more than 26 years old during the time of the examination. Number three, you need to be physically, mentally, and psychologically fit before you enter the training. Number four, your civil status should be single. Number five, you need to have a good command of English language. Number six, you don't have any criminal records in the Philippines. And last but not least, number seven, you have not been dishonorably separated from the government or private services. Also, the most important thing, you need to be a college graduate of any courses, whether if it's medical related or engineering related, as long as you finish college. That's uh, one of the basic requirements before you take the exam of an air traffic controller. 
So when you meet all of these requirements, let's go to the exam proper. The qualifying exam has four parts. That's general knowledge, logic, numbers, and reading comprehension. Each section has 50 questions, so there will be a total of 200 items or questions. However, you need to answer all of these questions in only two hours. The qualifying exam is taken simultaneously nationwide, so there are designated um, exam venues such as in Manila, Cebu, Zamboanga, Iloilo, Tacloban, Davao. Only the top 100 or top 80 will proceed to the next round, and that is the panel interview. Now, the panel interview is like a typical job interview. However, the panelists usually ask, how did you get this job? Or how did you hear about this job? Or are you really sure that you're going to be an air traffic controller? Something like that. So you need to prepare for those kind of questions. And also, aside from panel interview, you also take a medical exam. Now, if the doctor finds out that you're colorblind, then I'm so sorry, you're definitely out of the game. So after you pass the exam and the panel interview and the medical interview, let's go to the fun part, the training. The training proper lasts for 10 months and it's divided into three parts. First one is the phase one, which is the theoretical part. Phase two is the laboratory part and phase three, the on the job training part. So the phase one is more on the theoretical part. It lasts for like eight weeks. It depends on the course um, schedule. However, you will be introduced to a lot of basic uh, subjects about aviation, like the IKO, the air traffic service, the basic of uh, flying, the meteorology, and other subjects related to aviation. So every week you have exams. And a lot of people thought that it's purely analysis, but no. The training is more on memorization. It's a test of memory. So if I were you, you need to study a lot. Like it really tested my patience and memory during the first phase. Now the second phase is more interesting because you will be introduced to the three major control sectors, the aerodrome, approach control, and the area control center. Now, um, you'll be divided into groups and uh, you will be subjected to another sets of exams. And like I said earlier, it's still more on memorization. There was one time during my lecture part of the approach control, we have like four exams in one day. So it was really tough. Your mental fortitude will be tested during the training. Then after the lecture part, you will apply those procedures at the simulated dry runs. If I have the chance to go back to the training, no. <laughs> I don't want to go back during my training days because it really tested me as a person, but all as well, I survived the training. So after the phase two, you will be regrouped again to the third phase, which is the on-the-job training. So you will perform some jobs at the aerodrome, the approach, and the area control. Well, it really depends on the training officer during that time, but it's more like an immersion on how they really do. So the on-the-job training is more like an immersion to the trainees, so they get some ideas of which um, facility they would like to be assigned or something like that. So. So right after graduation, you will be performing another round of the on-the-job training and while doing your OJT, you need to process your air traffic control license. You have to process that at the main office of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines and apart from that, you need to take the English language proficiency exam and some skills tests. Then if everyone has the air traffic control license, the head will give you your place of assignment. Now, your place of assignment is really dependent on how you performed during your training. However, if you requested for a facility that still has a vacant position, they will not hesitate to give you that position. However, if your preferred facility does not have any vacant position, then I'm so sorry you're not allowed to go there. Today, we still need a lot of manpower at the Philippine Air Traffic Management Center, which is located in Pasay City, which is just beside the main office of Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. That's where the um, area control center and approach control of Manila is located and also the major approach controls in the Philippines such as Bacolod, Calibo, Mactan Cebu, Davao, and Clark. So basically, we still need more competent people to work with us. Okay, so let's talk about compensation. 
You will not be given any compensation during your training process. However, the training is free, but you are responsible for your board and lodging and food. Now, if you have an air traffic control license, you will be given a starting salary of 51,000 pesos. It gets better when you get an item or you're tenured at the government. So the starting is 52 to 54,000 ish, it really depends. And also you're entitled to receive a night differential pay and overtime pay if ever and a flying pay. So if you have, let's say five to eight overtimes a month, plus the flying pay, you will get at least 70,000 ish. So I think that's not really bad for a starter. The learning does not stop at the training because once you get to your assigned facility, you need to study the area charts, the procedures, the local procedures, and also you need to, to get the rating of your assigned facility or sector. Now, once you get your rating, you're on your own. You need to decide on your own. You will not be guided by your supervisor or your training officer every time you're in control. So along the way, you will be taught on how to to decide quickly on how to multitask or how to prioritize your traffic. So even though I've been in this service for almost seven years, I still learn a lot of things because there every year there will be a new procedure to be implemented so as to maximize the usage of the airspace. Yeah, it's a never ending learning process here in the air traffic service. It's actually fun. <laughs> so do you have what it takes to become an air traffic controller here in the Philippines? Don't hesitate to take the exam. One thing I like about my job is that immediately after my shift, my responsibility is done. I don't bring my job at home. Unlike other jobs, they still need to bring their jobs at home so as to finish all those tasks. So it's kind of, you know, stressful. But the only drawback about my job is that even on holidays, we are required to work. Now in the Philippines, we're not allowed to take vacation leaves during um, December 15 to January 15 because that's um, one of the busiest months in the Philippines. Everyone is flying, everyone's going home. So even if we're rendering duty during the um, holiday seasons, I still consider it as a blessing because um, I bring people to their homes safe and sound. I bring people to their families and somehow they're complete during the holiday season. So I guess it's kind of fulfilling. There are times that a particular ship is stressful because there's a weather system and if there's too much traffic, but at the end of the day, if you solve those problems seamlessly, then it's really a fulfilling job. I mean, I have no regrets. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop those at the comment section down below. And also don't forget to punch the like and subscribe button so that YouTube will know that I'm doing a great job here. <laughs> Once again, this is your boy Renzi Benzi saying, adios amigos, bye.